Right, so here what we'll be doing is pulling a set of data from a remote location on the web. In this case, it will be a remote GitHub repository, the one you see here. Uh, we will be processing this data with a JavaScript uh, file, and then we will be sending that process data to an HTML file, uh, which can be deployed as a website. And we will be using Webpack to do this, to do that compiling step. Right. So Webpack will actually uh, be simplifying a rather sometimes tedious process, and this is why we're using it. So we don't have to install all dependencies manually and put them on the declare them on the HTML form. So we'll start by just showing you uh, what data we are pulling. Right. So this is a data set I've built. I've made with a C++ code I developed. And this C++ code, what it does is it makes 10,000 entries of what I am trying to represent as three-dimensional spheres with a different site in three-dimensional, a different site in a three-dimensional space from 0 to 350 coordinate units. Um, so each of these entries is a coordinate for each of the 10,000 uh, elements or spheres. Um, then also the next part of, so in total we have three keys. We have this space key, XYZ, 10,000 entries for that key. We also have, I'm trying to find the scroll bar. We also have the second key which is the corresponding color for each of those uh, s spheres in hexadecimal form, followed by the voltage or the, the relative electric potential of, of each of these um, datum. Uh, in, in here are in units, I'm ambitioning it to be just units of volts, right? So from one, the ranging from one to 10,000 volts. Uh, now, I made the data set this way because just to put things in perspective, the high spatial complexity makes it so that we can actually have a very large combination of coordinates. In total, there's uh, around like 42 million, right? But if you were to combine that with the number of color combinations we can choose from, there's an even larger number. It's actually 11, around 11 billion different combinations of colors in different locations in space. It is actually a human population scale in terms of magnitude. Uh, humans, we, we are, there are just 8 billion of us living in the world, right? Okay, so to begin, without further ado, we'll start by building this app, right, which will generate, a, basically pull this data set, process it, and compile it on a website. For that, we will need to download, to clone a another repository we have here, which is actually a, a template, a Webpack template from the Webpack tutorial, which you can also look at, which also you can check out at your leisure here in this link. Uh, I will be placing all the links under the video description. And so what the only thing you need to do here is access this site click on the code button and copy paste uh, this HTTPS, HTTPS address and you can copy paste it basically just copy it now right and uh, just access whichever location in your computer you may desire to house this repository in and once you're there you're gonna type git clone and the paste you paste the uh, HTTPS address Okay, that you just copied. So after doing so, you can just access this newly cloned repository, and you can use your favorite text editor uh, to open the whole file that you just cloned, the Webpack demo folder.
thing in my case is uh, Visual Studio Code, which I highly recommend you use. However, you may have there may be other options that you're more familiar or comfortable using. Um, well, with Visual Studio, you can just um, check out all the files that we've grown. The main one we will be modifying is this index.js file. Now, this of course is from a template. Now, um, if you haven't installed npm, uh, you're going to need to do so. Uh, you can just Google it, right, um, to, to, to find the installation instructions. In my case, I don't need to well install it because I already have it installed, as you can see here. So after you've installed npm, what you're going to do is you're going to type, you're going to compile all the dependencies which have been declared already in the template. And to do so, you're just going to need to type npm install inside you know, this clone repository, right? After you've done that, a node underscore modules folder will appear in your directory. As you can see, this node modules just appeared out of nowhere. So these are all the files that are needed to compile um, to compile your all your code in the source in the source location in this case so that it can be deployed as a standalone app in the dist folder. Right. So just to show you you know just the template so that template uh, can be compiled after installing the dependencies by npm run build. So you run that command and now you can open the compiled HTML file, which is inside the DIST uh, directory. Uh, in my case, I just typed this command, Firefox. Uh, and so this is basically right what the template is designed to do. Just print hello webpack uh, in the HTML form, in the web form. Right. So, what we will do, we will not be needing uh, this script because this is just a script that was used for the template to, to you know display the hello webpack right. So we can delete the whole thing, and this is where we'll be writing all the code to do the get request. So the next step, seller. The next step will be for you to install jQuery and all its dependencies so that we can use it here. The first will be uh, installing jQuery inside the inside this repository, and we're gonna type npm install save followed by jQuery. Now you can see that it's done. And there has been a change here, and the change was that uh, the system now automatically populated this section, this j new jQuery entry. Okay. Besides doing that, you're also going to need to do some configuration, some changes, make some changes on, on this webpack configuration file. So for that, just uh, need to type some code here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to Google it. Um, webpack build. No, no, it's not build, right? What is it? Plugins. We're going to need to install a plugin. This doesn't help. Uh, we're going to need to add the jQuery plugin. And so I'll also place this website uh, under our video description. I believe the command we need to write is uh, starts with plugins. We're gonna need to do this. Take this option. Use the provide plugin to inject implicit globals. You're just gonna copy paste all that code. You're gonna paste it here in the webpack configuration file. You're gonna paste the webpack declaration on the top. These consecutive dots are not needed. And this plugins declaration goes inside the module.exports um, definition. Okay? So after you've done that, we are ready to use jQuery 
run AJAX request through it using Webpack. Isn't it great? Alright, so let's start. We'll start by now importing jQuery, which has also already been installed as a dependency. Okay. After that, we will be start. We will be building a function to run the the data extraction or get request. And of course, we don't start with get function definition name. We start by writing function. Uh, I believe yeah. So function followed by get data. All right. And now, uh, for this get data, of course, has a, the input will be a callback, a callback uh, handler. And inside uh, this function, we will need to write the AJAX request, which is represented as a dictionary. The first entry for the AJAX request will be obviously be the, the site, the URL, where we are getting the information from. Then the type of AJAX request, which in this case will be a GET request, followed by a success operation. So basically, it it dictates what we will do with the information we are um, pulling. Right. So in this case, it's basically just uh, refer back to the information we're pulling as a, as the input variable. Now the URL we need to write here is the URL for our data set. And the data set is not in this webpack demo repository, but rather on the former get dictionary repository I showed you. I'm gonna go to that repository handling the data. I'm gonna click on data.js. Then you're gonna click on the raw button, and then this is you're gonna copy the address for the raw data the raw address holding all the data. All this data is actually held as a single string. So we're going to go back to our code. We're going to paste the, the website there. And now we're going to we're going to continue this exercise by calling the function. And basically executing this function we just created. And this the input will actually be a function itself right which uh, which is actually this large function there is I believe nothing wrong with this code mm. okay. So we'll start by declaring basically the the response, which is actually this. Is, it goes back to this callback function, right? So basically, the string we get from the get request and this address is going to be declared as an object, which is going to be called JSON. Now, this object by itself it doesn't give you much. It just gives you the string this whole bunch of data as a single string is not really that practical for some manipulation so what we do is we need to parse it and make it into an actual dictionary and that is easily done by just declaring a new variable and parsing this declared variable as a dictionary as the dictionary that it actually is right because if you didn't start with a defined dictionary you will not get one uh, nonetheless, so what we're going to be doing now is that after you know parsing this string as a dictionary, you know open a console log command, and we're going to have this dictionary print under the console section on the website. Now we're going to be deploying it again, not deploying it, but compiling it. npm run, npm run build. And now we're going to be refreshing this site to see what we get. As you can see, you won't get anything on the main site. 
because we made it print in the console section, which you can see here, right? So now, so you can see it is printing the whole structure as a dictionary and not a string. So it is giving us the three different keys, color, space, color, and voltage, and even the subarray length and everything from all those data sets, from, from this data set. Of course, we may need to. We want to make it a little bit more complex than this. Uh, and rather than printing in the console, we want to write in the website in the web form. So to do that, we'll start by we'll make some additional declarations for all the information, spatial information in that dictionary. Right. So uh, here we'll just declare the 10,000 different coordinates as a space variable or a space constant, right, constant. And we'll also be adding uh, the colors, which here uh, on the dictionary, in the dictionary were declared, were referred to by the color key. And as you can see, you can just, uh, the key is actually Define as color, and then the last key is defined as voltage. So we can declare the final constant. I'll just, I'll just put electric here. Define that constant as electric, and referring to the voltage key. All right. So now we're going to silence this console log command we already performed. We're going to write write straight into the website. And what we're going to start writing is just the first, the first coordinate from the 10,000 elements. All right. So it is as easy as just typing document out right, and the first index for the space variable. We're going to compile again, running npm run build. I'm going to go back to the website, and we are going to refresh it because it's already compiled. And now, as you can see, we get the first coordinate for the first element in three-dimensional space. As I mentioned, the coordinates span from 0 to 350, so this is kind of like around in the middle on, the, on that space, right? So now we can always make it more complicated. And rather, uh, instead of obtaining the coordinate for the first uh, for the first entry you can obtain coordinates for the first 20 entries like that we just run declare for loop here and we nest this command inside the for loop and instead of zero index we just type an i index and so now we can this should display the first uh, 20 three dimensional coordinates and so we compile again with npm run build and we refresh and apparently we don't get anything for some reason so I'm not sure why we don't get anything uh, let me just try something it's a little strange uh, it's because of this. <laughs> okay. So yeah, let i equals zero. We need an origin. All right. So now we are gonna be writing. We compile it again after we resolve that issue. We'll refresh, and now we should get the first twenty coordinates. They're not arranged very neatly. Uh, however, so what we'll do is we just need to do some formatting here. So I'm just going to type into the document, type some break spaces, maybe even define this as location in 3D, right? Oops. Okay. Um, also followed by a break space. Just to make it a little nicer, we can just type uh, the. Well, 
I mean the node index for each of these iterations right so we start at the yeah, break space would be adequate here node number one so node number one will be i plus one for the zero entry and of course we can give it a nice title on the top electric nodes okay and that should do it I think hopefully so now we can compile again and now we refresh the site and now this should give you should give us the first 20 spatial coordinates for the 1000 10,000 elements now of course we can expand it to 10,000 you know, what we're do we're gonna do be before doing that we're just gonna have write the other information on the web on the website so we're gonna also write color some space would be nice here okay and also the voltage right I'm just gonna type EP or electric potential and volts as the unit and here of course should be colors for the color entries and electric for the voltages now after doing so we can compile again and refresh the site and now we get entries in a very nice way we can of course reduce some of these spaces to separate them a little nicer so how do we do that just get rid of these break spacing commands or declarations and we refresh again and also each of the nodes should have the information displayed we should display the information for each of the nodes in a more in a nicer cleaner way here right so we have the information for the first 20 nodes now and we can always expand to the 10,000 nodes by just typing 10,000 here in the iteration loop we compile again with npm run build we refresh after the compilation is done and now we should have let me just expand a little bit and this should give us the information for all 10,000 electric nodes their voltage, colors in numerical form and coordinates of course um, you can always expand on this application and even build a three-dimensional model uh, of all the electric modes with the electric nodes with the corresponding spatial three-dimensional location and relative voltage which I've actually done also and I'll show you here so. you can always build um, even other information, other stuff, right? By pulling information from the internet. So, in this case, uh, this website is pulling information from this database, which we have um, obtained a GET request from. It is uh, basically placing each of the nodes in their corresponding location in three dimensional space. Uh, it is coloring them with their corresponding color also described in the database and it is representing their relative voltage with respect to the uh, size of the of the force semi-transparent force fields you see here right so for instance uh, this cyan colored uh, electric node has a very large voltage whereas for instance uh, let's see this I can just travel around Whereas this yellow node, for instance, has a um, very, very small uh, voltage, as well as you know this purple one also, which doesn't appear to have a force field. So, and of course, there's 10,000 10, electric nodes here in all this very large three-dimensional space. And of course, I've made this application with 3JS, which is a graphical graphical processing library 
with JavaScript. And you can also find some information, some samples if you want to learn a little bit more about it. Uh, I will also be putting this site under the video description. And that's about it. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, you found it useful. So please give it a like if you like my content. Uh, you may subscribe also to my channel, which is in the address. Oh, you're in it. <laughs> Alright. So that is that is it. Thanks.